how did you get connected in the hip hop circle? Obviously, you say you 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 work with the Method Man, you dress Method Man, but you really got your big break when LL did a commercial and he had a hat on. Did you did you know it? Did you know it? Did you, did you know he was going to wear the hat? And when he wore the hat, did you know you were going to blow up like Nitro? No and no. So <laughs> LL had just. You know, we begged him to do a deal with us, and um, and LL is an absolute amazing um, partner and celebrity spokesperson. He's really dedicated to it. The Gap called him, and this, I think, is the conversation about the importance of diversity. The Gap called him, you know, and he didn't feel really good about the way they addressed him, but he just felt like they were just saying, yeah, come on in and shoot one of those rap videos, and that's our policy, and whatever the case is, they didn't, he didn't really feel good about it. So he says, for us, by us, on the low in the Gap commercial. They spend $30 million basically airing a FUBU commercial. And um, because they didn't have anybody in the company or in the marketing agency that really loved hip hop or were of color, uh, they they didn't pull that ad for five weeks until they finally found out what happened. Um, And that's because of the lack of diversity within their system. Now, I do got to tell you, uh, on the flip side, they hired a very young uh, multicultural agency after that. They did their analytics and found out the target market the Gap was trying to hit increased by 300 percent because the kids thought they can get FUBU at the Gap. And they called me up. We gave each other a big old sloppy white kiss. No tongue. And they ended up spending <laughs> another 60 million dollars re-airing that ad. And that's when FUBU started to head to uh, 350, 400 million dollars. Was LL the only rapper that you reached out to about a branding, about, you know, being in Dorsey, being a partnership with, were there any rappers that turned you down? How many rappers turned me down, but LL was the only one we formalized a long, a long term contract. But okay. um, yeah, but we, but, but most of the rappers really supported us. Now it's funny, you know, as I talked about all those other people who, who came out of Hollis Queens, when I was 14 or 15, I was on tour and I had promised my buddies, my four other buddies, not my partners. I said, I'm going to be the biggest dude in fashion. Another dude said, I'm going to be the biggest dude in videos. Another dude said, I'm going to create a record label. Another dude said, I'm going to be the biggest drug dealer. And those friends were Hype William, who became the very big producer. Yep. Um, Irv Gotti, who owns Murder, Inc., who yep. discovered Ja Rule right down the block from me. And Irv lived a couple other blocks from me. And our buddy who decided to become the biggest drug dealer, uh, he just came home after 26 years of serving time. And Hype had made the movie Belly about him. So... Um, I think it's when you speak it into the universe and you set goals at such a young age. I mean, when you think about it, me, Hype and Irv, me, Hype, Irv and Alfred, who they call buns in, in, in belly, DMX played. We all set those goals at a young age and we all executed them in some sense. I'm looking at NSYNC, Mariah Carey, Snoop Dogg, Buster, ODB, E-40, Hype, you mentioned Hype Williams, who's a good friend of yours. All, you got some of the biggest name, Mariah Carey, NSYNC at the time, uh, Snoop, Buster. In FUBU. So now you know, okay, we've made it. Because these got some of the biggest entertainers in their chosen field wearing FUBU. And we know how we are. We Oh, if Snoop got it on, if Mariah Carey got it on, it's got to be legit. Yeah, 100%. And, and that was, you know, that was, again, we were culturally, we, we, we spoke the culture. Like, we didn't go to boardrooms and stuff like that to meet these artists. You had to, if you want to meet Method Man, well, you better get ready to, you know, that was Keith's job on my team. You better better get ready to be at the studio at two in the morning and get smoked out with <laughs> Method Man. Right. That's just where you're going to meet him. Right. And um, you got to, and you understand, you know, all these people come with a crew. Some do want the bag over here and this and that, but you have to understand the culture. And we were very, and, and still are very entrenched in the culture of what it was. So we spoke their language. You know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and become an official member of Club Shay Shay, where we do something before two something.